defeated Death couldn't hold you down Let's stand and sing. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. We're gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praise loud. The enemy's been defeated. Death couldn't hold you down. Christ is risen. Christ is risen risen. indeed. All right, that was great. A little bit louder. Christ is risen. Christ Christ is risen risen indeed. indeed. Amen. All right. All right. Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Maumelle. You're welcome to be seated for a minute. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I'm one of the pastors here at the church. I'm excited to get to be with you today and celebrate the risen Lord. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great service. God is in this place with us and we are gonna give him glory and praise. A few announcements I wanna let you know. I'm really excited to tell you as a part of our continuing efforts to reopen things and so forth that we are gonna have Vacation Bible School in person this year for the kids. It's gonna be great fun. The signups and everything are available online for us and and, uh, registration for kids is available. It's gonna be really exciting. That's gonna be the first week in June. There's a lot of great things that are gonna be happening and if you would like our uh, weekly updates you just need to um, email the church or uh, you can uh, Facebook message us and the information is on your bulletins if you're here if you're at home that'd be very easy just to Facebook message us and let us know we'll add you to that weekly list I bid all of you here welcome I bid those of you who are at home welcome we are one in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit wherever we're worshiping today we are one family one body of Christ. Uh, Let's continue to praise God and sing. Open wide, blinded Giants fall, dead men rise, sickness healed at the mention of you. Sinners chains breaking free, miracles still happening. Waters part, I see mountains move. She's a power. 
darkness a blaze, but Jesus. It's great to be here on this Easter morning as we celebrate the risen Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh God, with our faces turned towards the light of Easter, may it remind us of the day that your son arose and escaped from the tomb. Our hearts are warmed by prayers and praises as we come before you to pray for all the needs of the world. As we come into the light of this Easter morning, may we raise those who are struggling with illnesses, with the despair in their lives, the breakdown of the family relationship. We pray to you for the light of Christ to shine upon them. Into the light following this Easter morning, we bring our thoughts and prayers to those places in our world where war, violence, poverty, and needs are experienced every day in their lives. We pray to you for the light of your sun to shine upon them. Into the light following this service on Easter morning, we bring the news of the past, of all the pain, suffering, violence, and despair to those that have needs for peace. And we ask that the light of Christ shine upon them. Lastly, into the light following this Easter morning, we bring ourselves as we hold our lives up to you with all the struggles, the heart's yearnings, the hidden dreams, the unfulfilled potential. And we pray to you for the light of Christ to shine upon us. This we ask as we pray the prayer that you gave us so long ago as we pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the time has come in our service uh, that for our uh, church uh, participants uh, and our church family, this is when we give to continue to support the ministries of the church. We know we have a lot of friends here today who are guests and who have maybe church homes somewhere else. Uh, for any who feel led to give, uh, the information will be on the screen on how to do that using a QR code or giving online. And there is a giving box in the back of the room, kind of a pillar-shaped box. Uh, for those who are online, the information will be on your screen as well. Uh, but I'm very proud of the ways we've been able to continue to serve the community and spread the gospel and do the things that are important to us as a faith family 
import our calling uh, through this time of COVID-19. I'm really proud of the ways that our volunteers have stepped up and our staff has learned to do things in different ways. And uh, all of that is because of uh, the commitment of those who are supporting these ministries and the power of the Holy Spirit working among us. We've gotten to feed 110 kids through our backpack program every single week of this school year. And uh, that is a tribute to God's faithfulness. We were able to continue through the summer because it was needed especially this year and we'll continue through next next summer too now that we've learned how to do it so God has blessed us in so many ways and that's just one example thank you for participating in our church through your giving Well, friends, I've got some jokes for you this morning. 
just about every Easter, what happened to the two apple trees that were planted together? Anybody know? They lived happily ever after. Ah. <laughs> what happened to the fungi that moved into an apartment in New York City? He didn't have much room. There you go. <laughs> what happens when you mix an elephant and a rhino? Anybody? Elef rhino. See, elef rhino, there you go. So, <laughs> so the elephant rhino, just so you guys know, that can't actually happen. I think you guys know that. That is a miracle of modern photoshopping. You can't really crossbreed an elephant and a rhino. That would be something at the zoo I want to see. But it doesn't actually work that way. Uh, so the, the elephant rhino is a uh, figment of someone's imagination. And today what we're going to talk about is the resurrection. And was the resurrection just a figment of someone's imagination, or did it actually happen? The title of the message today is, What Happened? And this is the scripture, Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared, and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember how he, oh, he is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others who were with them to, who told this to the apostles. But they didn't believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. May God bless the reading of this, his holy word. So, Peter, leap before you look, Peter. Ready, fire, aim, Peter. This is who Peter has been the entire time we have been with him in the Gospels. If you read about Peter in the Bible, you're going to find that Peter jumped out of a perfectly sail-worthy boat impulsively on two separate occasions. Peter was the first one to declare that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. He was the first one to really come to that level of faith. And then he argues with Jesus about what Jesus is going to have happen next in his own life. Uh, Peter is impulsive. He's bold. He's faith-filled. He is, uh, at some, sometimes he's a little bit arrogant, a little bit impudent. He's, he's, just, uh, he's just an intense personality, and he's full of energy, and he's full of purpose. And we see in this passage that Peter is a changed man. He is not who he has been up to this point. What has happened to good old Peter? He hears the women and their testimony, right, with the other ten disciples. You remember, there were twelve but the disciples have had several disappointments here in the last just few days in a very short period of time. They've seen one of their own number betray Jesus, and he's no longer with them. Judas has gone off, and so there's 11 disciples left, and uh, they, they have seen Jesus crucified. They've seen him uh, put in a tomb, and it has been three days, and they are devastated. 
And Peter, just like the rest of the 11, he is devastated. And what's more, there are some other challenges to Peter and the others coming to faith. At this time in history, women were not even allowed to testify in a court of law uh, because they were seen as, I don't know, like too flighty, not dependable, something along that line. And uh, so Peter was... um, He was there just like the women were. He heard the words of Jesus just like the women had heard. He goes to the tomb. He sees it's empty. He's at least that faith-filled that he wants to go figure it out. He goes to the tomb. He sees it's empty. He sees that the linens are lying to the side. If you were going to steal a body to harass a family, as occasionally happened in that time, you'd have taken the whole thing. But the linens are laying to the side, indicating that that body got up and moved around. Peter sees all of that all this evidence, and he still says, what happened? What happened? You know, today, people seem to think that you have to have evidence to believe in religion and evidence to believe in Christianity. Uh, people, people look for uh, proof that Jesus died and rose from the dead. People even try to look for proof that Jesus existed at all. And, and I have a couple things to say about that. Um, this, this perspective is called kind of being a realist. You know, uh, uh, there are people that take these flights of fancy and believe all these crazy things, but I'm a realist. I've heard people say this before, right? Um, and, and what I want to say about that, there's a couple things we have to think about. Jesus was a Jewish peasant. He was a citizen of a very small nation under Roman occupation, the great and powerful Rome. Why in the world would the life of a Jewish peasant leave any archaeological evidence at all? Jesus was homeless for the entirety of his ministry. Why in the world would there be any physical evidence that a homeless Jewish peasant existed for 33 years on the face of this earth? There is no reason to expect there to be physical evidence that he existed. But there is sort of evidence in the sense that there are historians who knew people who knew him. There are people who write about uh, the Christians, uh, sometimes in a disparaging way. Like, they're not for it. They're not trying to convert people to Christianity. But they write about it early uh, in the history of the years years following his death and resurrection. There are people who write about this Christian sect and what they believe. There are people who have given their lives for the Christian faith. And what we see is that there are a growing number of people in the world today that would tell you the resurrection didn't happen, and when you really press why it didn't happen, they say, well, it couldn't happen, so it didn't happen. Do you see what that is? That's what's called circular logic. Okay, it it could have happened, so it didn't happen. That doesn't even make any sense. What we believe about the resurrection is that God voluntarily broke his own laws of nature to do something that is incredibly rare and amazingly powerful. He brought someone back to life after they had been dead several days. Jesus raised from the dead, and that is the the basis of the Christian faith. I, I read a thing the other day that said that one quarter of the Christians in Great Britain do not believe in the resurrection. Beloved, I know some of us might struggle, some of us that are particularly into facts and data and so forth. I know some people just have a bent that this is harder to accept, but believing in the resurrection is really the basis of our Christian faith. Uh, we, we can't really say that we're a follower of Jesus Christ um, in the sense of actually being a Christian and depending on his grace if he didn't die and raise from the dead. Uh, that, that's, just, that's just the basis of the Christian faith. And so when Peter is there at the tomb and he's saying, what happened? What happened? Uh, what, what could have happened here? Uh, I think there are those of us today that might really sympathize with him. There are those of us today that maybe even in this room that really struggle with getting uh, to a place of having faith in the resurrection. If that is where you are, I understand because there's a lot of messages that come to us in this world today that tell us that our faith is overly idealistic or naive or something like that. What I want to tell you is that the voices that speak into our lives that automatically discount the resurrection 
are voices that don't understand that this is a leap of faith. It is a leap of faith. There's never going to be definitive proof because there's not supposed to be. It is a leap of faith. Now, there, is, there are signs, there are indications, and I've seen the signs and the indications. I have heard the word of Jesus in Scripture. I have seen changed lives in my own life. My life has been changed, and all of that is because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I know the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and all of that is because of Jesus Christ and his life and his death and his resurrection. What has happened to Peter has happened to a lot of us. Life has disappointed us in some way. We have had our hearts broken by something or by someone. There's probably not anybody here today who can't think of an authority figure or a revered hero that uh, hasn't, uh, that has uh, not let us down. Everybody here has at least one authority figure, revered hero that has let you down. Somebody who's done something you never thought they would do. Okay, life kicks us in the teeth once in a while. This last year has been hard on a lot of folks. Okay, there's been a lot of reasons for people to get discouraged and disappointed. And if we're not careful, we let that discouragement and disappointment and the the times when uh, somebody has betrayed our trust and betrayed our faith, we let all that sink in so much that we become a little bit bitter and a little bit cynical, and pretty soon we're saying, well, if all that bad stuff could happen, maybe the resurrection didn't really happen. What I want to tell you, my beloved church, is that the one who wins in the end is with you right now. And he won on the very first Easter morning. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm standing up here this morning in front of you, and uh, there are people in this room that are smarter than me and are better educated than me. Uh, But just so you know, I have a college degree. I have a master's degree. I speak two languages, and I read a third. I was not the greatest science student, but I did get through pretty well. I got decent grades. I had to work hard on it. And I believe in the resurrection. I believe in something that is a scientific impossibility, and that is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't have to say Elif Rhino because I do know I believe in the resurrection. I believe in it because of the ways that it transforms the world. And if you look around today, you'll see so many ways that it has transformed the world. You're going to see hospitals have been built because people felt the calling to do the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and heal the sick. Schools were built because people saw that people needed education to further their lives and to reach their full potential, and they wanted people to experience that kind of transformation. Because of their faith in Jesus Christ, almost the entire university system is indebted to the church. Um, you're going to see that there are, there are uh, addiction programs to help people manage uh, addiction and come to a place of sobriety, reach recovery. And that was started by people of faith. You see it all the time. The resurrection of Jesus is him conquering death. And you see people conquering again and again and again out of their faith in Jesus Christ, out of the presence of the Holy Spirit, reliving that resurrection in little ways all the time and sometimes in great big ways in this world we live in. I believe in the resurrection. What happened? The resurrection happened. And it is great good news. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for what you have done in and through Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you would help us not just to be realists, but to be hope-filled realists, people who know that we can be pressed but not crushed, persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. We, like your followers for 2,000 years, are people who have lives with ups and downs and hardships and joys, and in the midst of it, you are still God. And the resurrection lives within us, and the resurrection is a means by which we triumph again and again. You triumph in our lives again and again. 
Help us, Father, to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, to put our trust in his grace, to put our trust in the resurrection. Because we know this was your great, mysterious, glorious plan. And we pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in the resurrection. I believe Jesus died on the cross, his hands and feet held to the wood by metal spikes. I believe his body was pierced by the soldier's spear and even the sun was darkened as all creation grieved the death of God's eternal son. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that Jesus' body was placed in a borrowed tomb for three days. I believe that the power of God, his heavenly Father, brought life to his dead body and rolled the stone away from the entrance so that all might see that Jesus was no longer there. I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that the unbelievable story of the woman was true, just the, as the angel had announced. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. I believe that Jesus appeared to 11. Defeated, discouraged, demoralized disciples in a room where the doors were all locked and all hope was lost. I believe that when he showed them his nail-pierced hands and his spear-pierced side, they fell at his feet and cried out, My Lord and my God. I believe that the days that followed, hundreds saw him alive. All their doubt was removed. Their fear was gone. What could the world do to them? Jesus was alive. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that Jesus lives today as powerfully and perfectly alive as he did 2,000 years ago, as the old time passed and yet to come. I believe in the resurrection. I believe that Jesus calls men, women, and children to join him in changing the world, one heart and life at a time, starting with their own. One day soon, he will come again on the clouds of heaven with an army of celestial warriors whose numbers are beyond counting and whose power is beyond imagining. Jesus will establish his eternal kingdom where there will be no more soldiers. Or spears. Or sepulcher. Or battles. Or bleeding wounds. Or crosses. I believe all of this because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe in the resurrection. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as we uh, continue to worship. could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and light shot among us his glory revealed living he loved me Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Free thee forever. One day he's coming. Oh, glorious day. Oh, glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. 
can that healed nations stretch out on a tree and took the nails for me living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely one day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. thought about our old friend Peter, that man that was lost at the tomb and couldn't figure out what happened, became the leader of the church. He became still a little impulsive, but really at the heart wiser, as intense in his faith as he ever had been. He became a role model for everyone because of his conviction, his powerful belief in the resurrection. If you're struggling with that here today, there is still hope for you. If you're struggling and you're online today, there is still hope for you. I invite you to pray, to reach out, to accept that the miracle happened. I believe in the resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen. Go forth to love and serve God and your neighbor in all that you do, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.